Ladies and gentlemen, be inspired. Be inspired. When David Crisofulli, our state leader, stood at this podium and gave his address, he was standing on the foundation of those who have come before him. People like Neville Bonner, a representative of our party, the first Aboriginal parliamentarian in our federal parliament. That is our history, that is our tradition, and that is our heritage, and it forms the foundation of our future. 50 years ago next month, on 17 August 1971, Neville Bonner, a Jagera man, was sworn in as a senator for Queensland, a Liberal senator. Born on 22 March 1922 on Yukaraba Island in the Tweed Heads, under a lone palm tree, Neville Bonner was a stockman, a dairy hand, a cane cutter, a bridge carpenter. With the benefit of only one year of formal education, one year of formal education at Bow Desert Rural State School, Neville Bonner rose to be the first Aborigine to serve in our nation's federal parliament. You know the story, you know the story, but reflect on the circumstances, reflect on the circumstances. When he was a young boy and his family moved to Lismore, his mother sought to put Neville and his two siblings into Lismore State School. On the first day that they turned up, the parents of the other children came to collect their children, to collect their children. Neville described the circumstances as causing him indescribable feelings. But reflect that years later, after that indescribable situation, when he addressed me as a young Liberal member, he did so with such grace, with such dignity and with such compassion that he sought to understand the circumstances of that situation. Reflect that notwithstanding those circumstances, he saw the threat to Australian unity of the Black Power movement and the impact it was having on young activists. And he said, and I quote, beware of those among us who would pit Australian against Australian, still relevant to this day. When he condemned a violent demonstration, he became a target for death threats and violence. He was under 24 hour a day police surveillance. Reflect, ladies and gentlemen, truly reflect that Neville Bonner was one of us. He was one of us. When he was asked by friends to hand out at the 1967 referendum, Bill Hayden approached him as the federal member in Oxley and said to him, why are you handing out for the Liberal Party? You're meant to be handing out for us. And Neville took exception, took exception at that paternalism, at that someone dictating to him how he should live his life. And he took Sir Robert Gordon Menzies' We Believe statement home. He sat at his kitchen table. He considered and weighed every single value in that belief statement. And after he determined that he believed every one of those values, he joined our party. And those are the values which our new state president, Lawrence Springborg, referred to earlier today. Our values which form the foundation of our party. So he joined our party. He became one of us. He joined the One Mile Branch in Ipswich in 1967. He then became a delegate to our convention in 1968. He sat where you are sitting. He became a member of state executive in 1969. And with encouragement and support, in part from people who are still sitting in this room, he stood for pre-selection and became a candidate in a half Senate election. He was the third candidate on that ticket, an extraordinarily difficult position. He was essentially running against Vince Gare for that position. He fell short. And after he fell short, he had $1.70 to his name and went back to work as a carpenter for Morton Shire Council. Reflect, reflect that just like us, just so many of us, he didn't give up. He stood again when Dame Annabel Rankin retired from the Senate and caused a casual vacancy. Dame Annabel Rankin, 
another one of us, the first female federal representative from Queensland. When she stood down, Neville Bonner put his hand up again, and this time he was successful. Reflect on how Neville Bonner unified and did not divide. At his second pre-selection, he said these words, let me make it clear, I seek to go to Canberra to advance the whole of the Australian nation and its people, rather than to advance the cause of a part. And this was a continual theme in Neville Bonner's career, recognising the importance of his role as the first Aboriginal parliamentarian. In his first speech on 8 September 1971, he said these words, I shall play the role that my state of Queensland, my Aboriginal race, my background, my political beliefs and my knowledge of men and circumstances dictate. This I shall do through the grace of God to benefit all Australians. And reflect on how he carried the burden of the hopes and wishes of the Aboriginal people. And reflect on the strain this put him under. As he said in his first speech, all within me that is Aborigine yearns to be heard as the voice of the Indigenous people of Australia. Too long, too long we have been crying out and far too few have heeded our call. And reflect how he felt that his whole race was being judged on how he performed. And reflect on the social isolation he felt at times. He said, that was worse than being out droving. I was treated like an equal on the floor of the chamber, but there were hours just sitting in my office and I went home alone to my unit at night. There was never one night when anyone said, hey, let's go out tonight. Reflect on how he saw himself as a parliamentarian, not a politician. He fought for the rights of Aboriginal people to retain their cultural identity whilst having the opportunities of education, economic and social advancement. In his first speech, he spoke about the importance of preschool for the Aboriginal people. He chaired a select committee that reported on sacred sites and another committee that considered Aboriginal land rights in the Northern Territory. In recognition of his standing on these matters, he was given a rare privilege by special resolution of the Senate to take the Aboriginal Development Commission Bill and its replacement through the final stages of a vote in the Senate. But reflect on the other issues he fought for. Reflect on the fact that there are three islands in the Torres Strait which are part of Australia because Neville stood up and when Gough Whitlam was saying the border between Papua New Guinea and Australia should be at the midpoint between the Torres Strait, in the Torres Strait, he said, no, that's wrong. You've got to ask the people and obtain their views. And he advocated for those people and those three islands are part of Australia because of Neville Bonner's advocacy. Reflect. <laughs> Reflect on the fact that he was one of the only parliamentarians who stood up and said what was happening in East Timor was unjust and wrong. And reflect on how true he was proven to be. Reflect, ladies and gentlemen, on how he has inspired generations of people like us. In 1978, my good friend Ian Prentice, when he was president of the Young Liberal Movement, granted Neville Bonner a special life membership. And in doing so, he said, he could be one of us. He is prepared to speak his mind. He is prepared to talk to us, to listen, and most important, to hear. Reflect that after a period of estrangement from the party that occurred or was triggered in 1983 with a pre-selection, that he came back and addressed me and my fellow young Liberals, Steve Minikin amongst them, and said how important that special life membership was to him and that he would always be a Liberal at heart. And reflect how important it was. Reflect how important it was that a few years later, John Howard, as our Prime Minister stood on this stage and gave him life membership and brought him home. Reflect on the fact that today, in two weeks' time, another young Liberal, a great, a great member of our party by the name of Sean Jacobs, who has stood as a candidate for this party, 
is going to release a book on Neville Bonner. And that book is called A Black Life Mattered. I wonder what Neville would think of the identity politics of today. I think we know. And we know because we need to do no more than reflect on the words, those famous words he stated at the Constitutional Convention. That was the only time in my life I had an opportunity to vote for Neville and I voted for him as a delegate to that convention. And these are the words. And they often come back to me in the Senate when I'm sitting in the Senate and I'm listening to the divisive language from the Greens and the Labor Party. These are the words Neville said. From the bottom of my heart, I pray you, stop this senseless division. Let us work together on the real issues. Let us solve those problems which haunt my people, the problems of land, of health, of unemployment, of the despair and hopelessness which leads to suicide. Let us unite this country, never divide it, ever. Be inspired, ladies and gentlemen, be truly inspired and let us always cherish our history, our heritage, and let us always honour the example of those who have fought for our values. There is no better example than the great Neville Bonner AO.